Hello everyone. In this presentation, let's see about how to choose the ideal burr for access cavity preparation while doing root canal treatment. Basically, access cavity preparation includes removal of the decay in a palpably infected tooth and enlarging the cavity in order to facilitate cleaning and shaping. There are so many burrs which could be used for preparing the access cavity. Every practitioner have their own opinion regarding choosing the burr for preparation of access cavity. I have put forward some list of the burrs which are commonly employed for access cavity preparation and trying to find out which could be considered as the burr of choice for preparing the access cavities. The widely used and most commonly recommended type of burr for access cavity preparation is the round burr. It is said that with the help of the round burr, the caries is excavated, then a drop is made inside the pulp chamber and then working from inside towards outside, the walls are flared and prepared. This is better said than done because it is impossible or it will be very difficult to prepare the walls smooth and straight with the help of a round burr. And also the round burr, once it is placed inside the tooth, we cannot see the angulation of the burr. This can lead to misorientation of the burr inside the access cavity and which might lead to gouging or even perforations. So a round burr cannot be used solely for access cavity preparation. It can be combined with some other types of burrs for enhancing and for refining the preparations. Next let's see about the endo access burr. Endo access burr is a type of burr which is recommended for access cavity preparation and it can be considered as the single burr which can be used for access cavity preparation from start to the finish. It has a ball end and it has a tapered fissure body. The caries excavation and the initial entry inside the pulp chamber can be made with the same burr at the same time enlarging and flaring of the walls could be done with this burr. But this burr which has a ball end may lead to gouging while we are attempting to flare the canal or to straighten the walls of the access cavity preparation or it might also can lead to gouging of the pulpal floor. Although it is marketed exclusively as an uh, sole burr for access cavity preparation, I do not consider that this could be considered as an ideal burr for access cavity preparation because in the hands of the inexperienced dentist, this can lead to multiple procedural errors. Many dentists prefer to prepare the access cavity with burrs which have a flat end. It is not only the tapered fissure burr with the flattened but there are so many different types of flattened burrs which are truly contraindicated for access cavity preparation. None of the burr which has a flattened and a short corner should be never ever used for access cavity preparation because if this burrs are used for access cavity preparation it will create some sharp line angles within the access cavity. While doing cleaning and shaping the endodontic files are glided along the junction of the wall and the pulpal floor. That is where the root canal orifices will be located. But if you are preparing access cavity with this flattened bus, it will create a ledge or step in that area. And whenever you are trying to put the file inside the root canal, it always go and it will hit in the sharp area which is created. So the entire procedure of doing cleaning and shaping will become extremely difficult, very time consuming and if it is a calcified canal, it will be very difficult to reorient the file 
each time while doing cleaning and shaping inside the root canal. So never ever use any burr which has a flat end for access cavity preparation. Some dentists prefer to use needle burrs after an initial entry inside the pulp chamber with a round burr then the enlargement of the access cavity is made with the help of this needle burrs. Some dentists also prefer to insert and enlarge this type of burrs inside the root canal orifices but this practice should be definitely avoided and it can create ledge or misdirection or the use of needle burrs within a fraction of a second can lead to perforations. In my view, the needle burrs have only one application while doing root canal treatment. They can be used for making a small entry inside the pulp chamber in a tooth with irreversible pulpitis and we can give intrapulpal injections. Other than that, I don't personally find any applications for needle burrs while doing root canal treatment or especially while doing access cavity preparations. A burr which is recommended along with a round burr for refining the access cavity preparation and also widely recommended to be used by the inexperienced operators is the safe end burr. It is a good burr which can be used confidently which will not lead to perforations or stripping in most cases. Even if the burr comes in contact with the pulpal floor, it will not cut the pulpal floor or it will not create any gorges. So if you are starting to do root canal treatment, I would recommend that the initial caries excavation and initial entry inside the pulp chamber could be made with the help of a round burr and once an entry is made inside the pulp chamber with the help of round burr, then the safe end tapered fissure burr can be used for enlarging the access cavity preparation and refining the walls. The only problem which we often come across with the use of the safe end burr is in case of calcified pulp chambers. Calcifications of pulp chambers are quite a common finding and if you are using a safe end burr, in those situations, it will be very difficult to prepare the access cavity. If you are using safe and burr for preparing access in those teeth which are having pulp calcifications, it might create an irregular pulpal floor, which might pose some difficulties while negotiating the canal, but really it is a good burr and which can be considered to be used for access cavity preparation but never as a sole burr it have to be coupled with the round burr. Most of the access preparation kits come with a surgical length burr. Surgical length burrs are recommended because it moves the head of the aerotor or the micromotor away from the tooth or the, from the occlusal surface which enables a proper vision and we may be able to see where we are cutting if you are using a surgical length burr. But again, the surgical length burrs are too long and if you are little careless, it can lead to perforations. Not only in the furcation area in case of a molar, even if you are using for an anterior teeth, a small misdirection can lead to a perforation within fraction of second. So the surgical length burst can be used only if you are so experienced and you have a very good control and preferably should be avoided by inexperienced operators. There are many types of special bursts which are available for access cavity preparation like the LN burr, the Muller's burr, the Munz discovery burr and so on. All these burrs have a small cutting tip and a long shaft. In day-to-day -day practice, use of these burrs is not that recommended and could be used in those cases where we find extreme difficulties in locating the root canal orifices or if there are heavy calcifications in the pulp chamber. But it is better to have one set of these type of special burrs in your practice so that when such need arises, it can be put in a slow speed handpiece and it will aid in preparing, refining 
the excess cavities and also in locating the root canal orifices. The last type of the burr but which is the burr which I often recommend my students for preparing excess cavity is the round and tapered fissure burr. I prefer this burr because this burr can be used for making the initial entry inside the pulp chamber and also for refining the walls and enlarging the axis. I recommend this burr because it has a rounded end so there is no need for separate use of a round burr and the body of the burr has a tapered fissure appearance and so that with the same burr we can enlarge and we can widen the axis cavity preparation. Some errors that could arise because of using this burr too like the gouging and perforations but the chances are very very less it's because one with this burr being a tapered fissure burr the orientation of the burr can be noticed easily by the operator unlike a round burr which is very very difficult but with this burr it is very easy and the second reason is the length of the burr is quite short so the chance for the cutting area if we are maintaining that few millimeters of the cutting portion of the burr should be visible out of the access cavity then the chances for perforation is almost nil or it can be neglected. With little caution if you are using this burr for access cavity preparation there is no need to change the burrs often or it can be considered as a single standalone burr for preparing the access cavities in most of the cases. I recommend the burr number TR14 for access cavity preparation. So I wish to conclude this presentation with the statement that there is no burr which can be considered as the best burr for preparing the excess cavity but with my experience in doing root canal treatment I would like to conclude stating that the round and tapered fissure burr can be considered as a wonderful burr which can be easily mastered and which can prevent lot of procedural errors. The second option could be excavating the caries with a round burr and making an entry inside the pulp chamber followed by the use of a safe end burr. I do not recommend the use of surgical length burrs, flattened burrs or needle burrs. The use of the endo access burr should be kept to minimal although it is marketed even by major companies as that it is the sole burr which is made for access cavity preparation. In my experience I find that it is not that well a good burr for access cavity preparation. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Have a nice day.